What do you think turned the tide? Well, I think, very frankly, two things. Uh, number one, in the first primary, we ran a very positive campaign and and a sort of a Marlboro-type campaign on television and uh, in the newspapers, etc. And the second time, uh, Jackie and I just very frankly uh, got off our tail and went out and shook hands with people, and uh, we organized it on a block worker basis, and uh, we got people to uh, understand what we were talking about, the issues that we were talking about, and we got them to turn out and vote for us. Now, you had a bunch of people in town early this morning. You want to tell us about it? Oh, yeah. I'm a, I'm a conservationist, for one thing. Uh, I camp out and float rivers and do all these sort of good things, belong to the Sierra Clubs. Uh, I'm not what you'd call a bird watcher, I'm just an outdoorsman. And many of these people from all over the state who we've known over the years and, and floated with and camped with uh, came in last night and camped out in Longhorn Park and uh, got up this morning and cleaned up and came down and worked with us in a block worker program to get the vote out today. And uh, we had over 100 people from around the state who came in here. My opponent said they were a bunch of left-wing left wing radicals who were coming in here from outside the district. Well, they're really not. They're a bunch of lawyers and laymen and school teachers and people like that who we've uh, floated with and camped with over the years. They came in here, camped out last night, and got up this morning and helped us work those, uh, those, uh, those districts and try to get the vote out. Senator, when you go back to Austin next year, what do you think will be the greatest pressing issue at hand? Well, there are going to be a lot of issues uh, uh, pressing at hand. Uh, one thing, of course, uh, is going to be this, this, this issue of pollution. Uh, we're all very concerned about that. And I, I would say uh, uh, both air and water pollution will be one of the number one issues. What about taxation? What do we do about it? Well, I, I would say this to you, just like I said in the course of the campaign, uh, we're probably going to have to raise more taxes. Uh, we're growing a uh, uh, state. Uh, we have uh, more and more people. We're going to double in college population and the kids that are going to be in the schools. We're going to have to raise more money. And uh, we're going to have to raise money to treat uh, water and air and uh, pollution. Uh, I would suggest to you, as I have in the past, that uh, what we ought to do at this point in Texas, because of our tax structure as it is, is to put the tax on luxuries, number one. And number two, I think uh, the natural resources uh, can stand a little bit more possibly. Uh, and I think that, uh, I think that uh, some of the out-of-state corporations who are beginning to move into Texas and who don't pay taxes on the same scale that they do in other major industrial states ought to be brought up to that scale. And uh, I think we can raise the money that way without having to go to uh, a tax on food or medicine or, or, or an income tax. Senator Kennard, congratulations and thank you very much. Well, thank you. It's been a hard campaign, and I'm glad it's over with. Mr. Richardson, you won by a fairly close margin. Uh, what do you contribute to your victory tonight? Well, I think that, uh, as I said at the end of the last primary, just a lot of good... Uh, we didn't have a lot of money, but we had a, a lot of real muscle and uh, people that would get out and work and bleed in what they were working for. And uh, just one good example is my hometown of Keller. Uh, last time they gave me 400 and something, 90 something votes to 50 uh, with three opponents, and this time they went up to 500 and something with 37 for my opponent. So, you know, when people will turn out like that, they really care and they really want you to win. I think uh, my opponent ran a, a doggone good race for the first time uh, out. Uh, they spent a lot of money, and uh, I think I proved that uh, the people can win. And, uh, I think the people did win. Uh, it was stated that there were several issues developed in this uh, campaign. Would you like to enumerate on some? Well, my main issue was that a, a man that serves on the commissioner's court should uh, uh, be weak. Uh, controversy uh, means progress, and this is what we've had over the last year and a half. Uh, we've probably had more progress than the county has had in 20-something years, and I'm, be, I'm just glad to be just a part of that. Uh, and in the next four years, I hope that Tarrant County uh, will go forward, and uh, maybe with a little less controversy, but with a lot more progress. Well, Mr. Richardson, thank you. Okay. Is that all right? And I never see white people. And my people capture the five missionaries and push on the ground. Because my people believe on the ground. And my people push on the ground for, cru for crucified. 
and my people coming and picking up all these clothes like this to the white, to the white missionaries. In a few minutes, when my people pick it up, all these clothes, the pants, the shirt, hair, the shoes, everything, my people eat of a fine missionary. See? The problem is this because my people now believe in Jesus Christ. Will you be telling the Indianians that all is forgiven and the police come home? Oh, yes. I, uh, they know that. They're here by their own volition, and I'm certain they're, they know they're welcome back any time. But I'm here to visit with them and, and uh, visit with my relatives who live here in Texas. There's one burning question. What does the word Hoosier mean, and where did it come from? There are more than a dozen explanations given to this and I think somebody wanted a name and they decided that this was a name that would spell happiness and friendliness and they call them Hoosiers. How does it spell all that? Well, Hoosiers are, are a pretty friendly lot, pretty happy lot and I think you'll see the people here and hear the music and you know the people who enjoy a good time. I think the, the saying or the explanation of it is most understandable is that in the olden days when when wagons went along the road and people sat on their porch and or in their cabins in pioneer days and someone wondered who it was passing they'd say who's there who's there and they they say that this is how it got its name Mr. Moreno, uh, what was happening yesterday when all the trouble started? Well, it's, uh, my wife and I had been to this uh, wedding of one of our friends. Uh, we were on our way home, coming out of the premises. Uh, we noticed that there was some uh, trouble going on inside of the building. My wife and I are here. We walked over there, and a policeman approached us, and I asked him, what's the problem? And uh, he looked at me and he said, what did you say? I said, what's the trouble? And at that time, he grabbed me by the tie and jerked me around and told me, he says, go on, get in the car. I said, well, what for? And at that time, I turned around at the same moment and they had my wife. And they put handcuffs on her and dragged her and threw her in a separate car and they dragged me and put me in another car. And I, all I asked him, I said, well, can I at least ride with my wife? And then he went on and told me to keep my mouth shut unless I wanted the same thing to happen to me as was happening to the rest of the people out there. They were all being 
head on their heads and, uh, well, just police brutality as far as I'm concerned. Mrs. Marino, uh, why were you chosen? You were just standing there, and what happened to you? Well, I was worried about what they were going to do to my husband. And I asked him, the police officer, I asked, what did he do? And he said, well, take her too. And they just handcuffed me and started dragging me to the car. And they put me in the car with five men. Well, I feel that uh, the area of general practice is a specialty in itself, and uh, the need of the people for medical care can uh, best be uh, given to the people by the general practitioner or family practitioner. Doctor, the academy has established a board of family practice. What would be the function of this board? Well, this board of family practice, uh, uh, which was originated last year, and the first group of candidates took their examination uh, in February and March of this year. Some 2,000 doctors across the nation in 50 states took this examination to be certified as diplomates of the American Board of Family Practice, establishing them on a par level with any other specialty. Will this certification be uh, permanent? Uh, this certification will not be permanent. Uh, each member that passes his board examination will have to be recertified every six years. And I might add that this is the first specialty board that has this requirement of recertification of their members. Have you been able to analyze the runoff races that were completed yesterday, does it appear that we're going to have a more conservative legislature this coming session? I think the House is going to be as conservative or, or perhaps more conservative than it was last session. I don't think the political personality of the Texas Senate has changed a great deal. Uh, last session, uh, most of the people who described the Texas Senate described it as a moderate Senate. I think uh, the four runoff elections yesterday provided a political personality for 1971 of the Texas Senate that can be described as a moderate Senate. What kinds of legislation might be coming up in this kind of Senate? I think next session that we're going to see a great deal more legislation introduced concerning the urban problems, water pollution, air pollution, mass transportation, a completely uh, new public school program where the cities of Texas will receive their fair share of the school taxes they pay, a much more progressive education program in Texas that will help our young people be prepared for the problems of the 70s and the 80s. The Democrats of Dallas County are concerned about the prospect of reaching over a million people in the county and thereby being affected by the Harris Amendment, which will limit the amount of filing fees they can charge and cut down on the party money to run elections. What do you propose to help them out? I think we're going to have to give serious consideration uh, in the future to state financial participation in both party primaries. The filing fees for a lot of the county offices are reaching such a uh, high uh, dollar and cents figure that it's, uh, I think, uh, prohibitive for people's running their office. I think the filing fee should be high enough to keep people from just running for public office to get their names in the newspapers and on the television and radio stations. But uh, I think the cost of uh, campaigns in general, uh, and particularly filing fees, are something that the the Texas legislature and the United States Congress are going to have to give a great deal of attention to in the near future.